having I guess just to start off, how or where take us through that punt return and how where were you that was a live ball on the field? Um I was yeah, I, I was very aware. Um me and my dad, like when since we were little, we always like talked about the like I've, I've always been watching football and like known about that rule. And you know, um Coach Glenn and Coach Bankins emphasize it a lot now. So, you know, as soon as I saw the dude try to catch it and it and, and he dropped it. And it, I, I was I was looking and was seeing, waiting to see if someone was gonna hand it to hand it to the official. And you know, on, on our punt unit, we emphasize that like the ball always ends in the official hands. So you know, they um just touched it and they touched it and let it be. And so, you know, as soon as I saw that, I just sprinted to the ball and, and, and knew that I could just get it and run it. And even if I would have got to the to the five yard line and fumbled, it still would have been our ball. So I guess now you've been, you were a part of the 2019 that beat Ole Miss. You guys did it again with the defense. Just how much does this say about where this program is from when you got here to now knowing that this program now beating an SEC team is almost like you're expected to have kind of like a performance like this win or lose. Oh yeah. Um, big time. That's why I was saying like going into this game, we were seeing as like a underdog or, you know, beating Mississippi State would be like a really big win. And, and, while and while it is a really big win and respect to those guys because they're, they're a very great team, you know we don't ever look at it like that. They they were just another team on our schedule, and we know that they were going to be tougher. And we just knew that if we we execute and, and do the things we would do, that we, we would come out with a win. Frank and then Terry. Hey, hey John, being able to have the game that you had on the day that you were honoring Isaac Bruce. Uh, what was that moment like for you being able to do that in front of a Hall of Famer? Shoot, it was um, big time. I um, hope it made him proud. <laughs> but you know, um, just doing it for doing it for him and all the all the other former Tigers that came back, um, the city. You know, uh, when I saw AG, I, I was already thinking like he had a big game uh, last time we were on ESPN on game day. So, you know, I was really kind of thinking about just having a big time performance. And, you know, I'm, I'm blessed and, 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 and glory be to God for, for just us coming out with a victory and a win like that. What's up, Kevin? How you doing? What's up? I'm good. How are you? I know you're a very humble person, man, but I know you got to sit back. I know you got 24 hours. You got to look back at this game and say, man, this was a good one for me, man. So I know when the first half was not going good, and I know you're one of the leaders of the team. What did you say to Seth to make sure he stayed poised and not try to overdo stuff? Um, I didn't have to say too much because you know I know Seth is a fighter. So you know, as long as as long as you got somebody somebody that's willing to fight and get and, and get heart, they're gonna they're gonna always be in it. But you know, I just told him that look, like anytime you get in trouble or you seeing anything, just like I got you. Trust me, I, I got you. So, you know, I just wanted to make sure that he stayed, he stayed in the game because, you know, at any given time, Seth is bound to make make a big time play. And, you know, and, and, and just like I said, it showed. Devin and then Mike. Uh, Calvin, I want to ask you about when you picked the ball up, you ran into the end zone, you had, you cramped up a little bit. What was that injury? And, uh, can you take us through that whole situation? Because you look like you cramped up a little bit, went to the back and came back out. Um, yeah, I was cramping a little, I think the series, um, I was cramping a little bit the, the series before, but you know, I, I got some fluids in, it was good to go. And so on that punt, when I got it and took off running, I got to like hour 20, like 15, I started cramping then too, but I was like, I just got to get to the end zone. But you know, that was just from, I just need to hide, I just need to hide, hydrate a little better. And you know, is it sometimes that, that just comes with the game and, and running a lot. Calvin it's, one thing, Calvin, it's one thing to know the rule, but it's another thing. Did you ever think that that would come up in a game where something that you studied and knew and when and then when it did and you're going down the sideline and everyone's going crazy on your sideline just to be smart enough? But did you ever think you'd get the opportunity to use a rule that not many people know about? Um, I didn't necessarily think that I would get that uh, that that type of opportunity, at least where they just like kind of just like leave the ball, leave the ball sitting there. It's sometimes like maybe a guy like will slowly come pick it up or something like that. But, you know, um, I wouldn't say I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily expecting it, but um, 
our coach always, Coach Glenn, Coach Silverfield, Bankins, they always emphasize on be, on being ready for for the moment. And you know, one of Coach Bankins' um, um, mantras is "stars be stars." And she so you know, um, and in a situation like that, that was a moment um, to to help the team out. So you know, it's just always um, you know, re remembering everything you've been taught and you know, putting it into action. And, and when you're running down the sideline and you see your sideline running with you, you're running towards a crowd of 43,000 on their feet. Just what was the emotions knowing you had clear sailing for what was a backbreaking touchdown? It doesn't get much better than that, you know, and to do it in front of the city and on a, on a big day like this, you know, it's just a very humbling experience, a moment. And, you know, that's just something I, that, that's just a that's a that's a play that, I, that I'll never forget. Isaac. All right, what's up, Calvin? What's up? Man, I remember you saying back at AAC Media Days that people would think you were crazy if they, they knew some of the internal goals that you had set for yourself. Man, kind of give us an update on what it is after three games. Um, You know, I'm doing, for, for my personal goals, I'm doing okay right now. You know, I still want to improve in a lot of the areas, just like um, – just being a runner and a receiver in general. But, you know, I think I'm I, I'm right where I need to be a little bit. <laughs> Thank you, Calvin. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all.